Blackmagic just released what I think is the most significant update to the ATEM minis, adding SRT support, multi-view output over USB, and network storage to support instant replay. Let's take a closer look. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. So this update applies to all of the ATEM Mini Pro and Extreme models. So that includes the ATEM Mini Pro, Pro ISO, Extreme, Extreme ISO, and the SDI Pro ISO and SDI Extreme ISO. So basically all the ATEM Minis that have the recording and streaming features, not the original ATEM Mini or the cheapest SDI version. First, head to blackmagicdesign.com, click on support up at the top, scroll down, click on ATEM Live Production Switchers, scroll down here until you see the ATEM Switchers 9.5 update. Go ahead and download that and install it. Once you have it installed, open the ATEM Setup app. It should find your ATEMs on the network or over USB. Click on this icon and it will run the update and install the latest version. You should then see version 9.5 in the software here. Then you'll want to open the software control app and that's where we'll be able to check out all the new features. First, let's talk about the new USB routing options. It used to be the case that the output option only had outputs one and two. So that would be either the two HDMI ports on the Extreme or the one HDMI port on the ATEM Mini Pro or the two SDI ports on the SDI model. In this update, the ATEM Mini gets a new webcam out option and the Mini you can choose between showing the multi-view of the program or the preview. It used to be that the webcam was always set to the program output and that's the only thing you would be able to get over the USB output. Now you can actually change it to show multi-view on your computer instead. This actually opens up a couple of really interesting things. So of course you can set it to multi-view and now your webcam input can show the multi-view on your computer, which is already pretty interesting because that means you can actually save yourself from bringing an extra monitor if you don't need a dedicated monitor for multi-view, you just want to use the computer instead. This is just QuickTime pulled up and I've got the Blackmagic Design webcam source selected here. But it gets better because now you can actually do a couple of interesting things with Zoom. I have a separate video about this on my channel already. The idea is if I'm doing a Zoom presentation, I want to present my camera in Zoom, share my slides from my computer in Zoom, but then record a layout with my computer and the slides in the ATEM to a drive or stream that directly. In the older video, I used a hack, which was either using an external capture card or looping out one of the HDMI outputs to one of the inputs. Neither of those are great. Those were just a workaround, but now we can actually do this properly. Let me show you how to do this in the ATEM Mini and as well as the ATEM Mini Extreme. So let's say I'm doing a Zoom meeting and I wanna share my camera in Zoom and also my slides. Now I've got a Keynote file created for this demo. I'm gonna go ahead and share just the Keynote screen in Zoom. This is of course what I would want in Zoom. I want Zoom to be sharing the Keynote presentation and I want the camera in Zoom to be only my face. Now, if I want to record this in the ATEM, previously I was stuck. The problem is that the ATEM will only record whatever is in program. And previously, the program was the only thing it could send out USB. So if I wanted to record my slides, I would have to put my slides in the program, but then Zoom sees my computer as its camera. So now what I can do is I can go into the output menu up here, go to webcam out and change this to preview. Once I select preview, as long as I make sure that my, my camera is on the preview, that's what Zoom will see in the camera slot. So Zoom is getting my camera feed and the ATEM is recording the computer screen. Now to make this actually work well, I would actually need to use a second monitor and, and put the slides full screen on the second monitor. So let me go ahead and do that really quick. I'm gonna actually screen share this over to my Apple TV wirelessly. And now that I've got my screen mirrored wirelessly, I'm gonna set it as a separate display over here. And I'm gonna plug in the Apple TV into input four of the ATEM mini. Now I can take my keynote file and just drag it over to the second screen, make it full screen. And now I can actually go ahead and create a layout with a picture in picture to make this work. So let me go back into the software control. Because the ATEM Mini doesn't have super source, the best we can do here is a picture in picture layout. So I can go ahead and use an upstream key, set it to DVE, we'll scale down the camera to about a quarter of the size. Make sure that's set to camera one and let's turn that on air. If I didn't need it to be a rectangle, I can actually use pattern and make it a circle, for example. We can shift this over until it looks about in the right position. And then I will move this over into a good spot on my slides. Let's say it's the top corner over, over in the right. One other note about upstream key, this top row of buttons puts the upstream key on air and this bottom one basically controls preview. So with it not turned on, I actually do see the picture in picture in the preview window. But if I turn on this button here, the picture in picture goes away in the preview. So now I've got the clean camera in preview and I've got the layout in the program. Now, of course, there's only one USB port on the mini, which means I can't actually record this to a drive as well as use it in Zoom, but I could stream this to a unlisted YouTube video and just download the recording later. 
So now that the setup is created, if I go back to my computer screen, you'll see I can control the slides here. And I have zoom showing just my clean camera feed up here. And the ATEM is, has got the nice layout, which it can then stream to YouTube or some other platform. Now let's do this all again, but this time with the ATEM Mini Extreme, which is actually a lot more useful. So now I'm connected over to the ATEM Mini Extreme. And if we look at the outputs menu, you can see the webcam output now actually lets us choose any of the cameras or other sources. So this is the way I actually wanted that to work. And now that we have two USB ports, we can actually do this properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose camera one as the output of the webcam. That gives us the clean camera feed in Zoom. Now I can go set up a nice layout using the super source in the ATEM Mini Extreme. Let's first set the super source in program and then we'll go configure it over here. So in box one, I do want my camera. Box two is going to be camera four, which is my slides. I'm gonna make sure it's not cropped and it's scaled in a little bit. So this looks pretty good. I'm happy with this layout and this is what I want to record but not send to Zoom. So back on the Zoom side, we see that Zoom has a clean copy of my camera because the webcam out is set to camera one. But in the extreme, we are recording and streaming the program feed, which is SuperSource. And because the extreme does have two USB ports, one USB is going to my computer and the other is plugged into a drive, which I can now do a recording of. And because it's the extreme ISO, I can do an ISO recording, which records a clean feed of my camera, the computer screen, as well as the SuperSource layout. So let's just do a quick recording in the extreme and then we'll show you what the files look like on the drive, which actually brings me to the next feature. In the previous version of the ATEM software, the only way to get access to the files on the drive was to either physically remove the drive or use an FTP client. But now actually you can just go into Finder or File Explorer in Windows. And if you open up this network tab, you should see your ATEM Mini Extreme on the network now. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. It connects to it. And now I see the drive that's plugged in. If I open that, I can now see that I've got all the recordings I've got on this drive. Here's the Zoom recording I just made, and we can see that the program file that was recorded is the super source, and we also have the individual ISO files of all my cameras. There's the clean copy of my camera, there's my other top-down, there's the other angle, and of course the slides here. So it's definitely more convenient to be able to access this using Finder or File Explorer, but that's actually not the real reason they did this. The actual reason they did this is so that the ATEM Mini ISO can be an ISO recorder for in the instant replay feature in Resolve. I've done a couple of quick tests of the instant replay feature, and I do plan on doing a deeper dive video in the future, so make sure you look for a link below to that. So in a blank Resolve project, I can go ahead and click up here in the Import Media folder. And if I navigate to the Network folder, go into the ATEM Mini Extreme, onto that drive, go into my Replay folder and the Video ISO files, I'm gonna go ahead and open this folder. My ATEM Mini Extreme is already recording to that folder on the drive, and now all of the ISO files are showing up in Resolve as in-progress recordings. And now you can see that in Resolve, you can see all the cameras recording live, and this is where I would go in and click Point of Interest, and this is how I can use the Instant Replay feature in Resolve, accessing the files on the drive plugged into the ATEM Mini Extreme. And the last feature in the update that I want to mention is, of course, the SRT feature. I actually have a whole video on my channel already that talks about the differences between SRT and RTMP in detail. I'll leave a link to that down below. But essentially, SRT means that the ATEM can now work a lot better in bad network conditions. It'll be much more reliable for streams and even lower latency. YouTube has also started rolling out limited access to SRT ingestion. I expect it'll be live on all channels in the near future. I've actually streamed via SRT to YouTube on my channel already, and so far it works great. So to set this up, Go over to the Output tab, click on Live Stream, and then choose Custom URL H.264. It gives you a place where you can type in an SRT URL now. So go grab the SRT URL for your YouTube channel or whatever SRT device you're streaming to. For example, I could also stream SRT to my web presenter. So I can just type in SRT here, and then the IP address of my web presenter. And since I don't have a streaming key set up on the web presenter, if I just click on air, it's gonna just start pushing via SRT to that device. I'm very excited to see SRT support come to the ATEM Mini line because I wasn't sure it was going to happen after the interview I did last year at NAB. It's taken a while for them to launch this, but it's very excellent to see it. And the last thing I wanna say about this is just think about how old the ATEM Mini Pro is. This update was released in June, 2024 for the ATEM Mini Pro that came out in April, 2020. This is a four year old device and they were able to update it to add all these incredible features four years later. 
This is something that I really appreciate about Blackmagic. They really do have long-term support of their hardware. They did not go out and try to sell you a new version of an ATEM Mini Pro that has these new features. Instead, they just added it in a free software update. And I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The ATEM Mini Pro, especially now that it's $295 for the Pro, is by far the cheapest four-channel recorder you will find on the market. Not only is it a four-channel recorder, but now you can also mount that drive over the network and use it for instant replay workflows using Resolve. And that is your quick update on the new features in the A10 Mini 9.5 update. Please leave a comment down below if you have any questions or join me on one of my weekly live streams on Sundays for a live demo of any of these new features. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.